they are unique. They are impressive and new to your eyes. None of them is native. But they enjoy our hospitality. This is a story, a story of unique creatures. Among the revenue generating industries in Kenya, tourism plays a great role with at least 20% of the total revenue coming from it. Over 1.4 million tourists visit Kenya annually, this being triggered by the unique wildlife including the Big Five. There are many tourist attraction sites across the country, but what makes one more attractive is its own uniqueness. This uniqueness led us to a recreation center located in Karen, Nairobi. As you have a smooth ride along Makoyeti Road off Langata Road, you will surely feel the fine breeze of the atmosphere that welcomes you to Stedmark Gardens, a sign that you are in the world of some unique animals. Stedmark Gardens is not only a home of tourism, but also a home of adventure and unique activities. Some of the activities here include wedding grounds, floating restaurants, heated swimming pools, cabins, fun activities for kids and an animal park. We will narrow down to the segment where we will see different and unique species of animals that Stedmark keeps. Kicking off with the bird segment, there are different kinds of birds with distinct features and characteristics. For example, the love birds which stay in pairs and if one dies, the other one is likely not going to survive due to stress. Indian Fantol Pigeon is another unique bird that originated from India and is mostly used for witchcraft in India. But in Kenya, it is a symbol of peace. To our interest, we featured a unique type of bird known as the crane, which is used as the Ugandan flag symbol.
Crested cranes are a type of birds which are grey in colour and a crown on their heads. They are about 1 metre tall and weigh up to 3.5 kilograms with a wingspan of 2 metres. They walk with serenity as though the life of the country it symbolises. The crane was chosen as Uganda's national symbol a hundred years ago which makes it one of the most cherished birds in Uganda. The cranes were chosen as the Uganda's national symbol in the coat of arms and in their national flag since it has all the three colors in the Uganda's national flag that is red, yellow, black and a white disc superimposed at the center. The raised leg of the crane symbolizes the forward movement of the country. The grey crowned bird scientifically known as Balesha regularum gudariceps inhabited Uganda's swamps and fields long before coming of tribes in their territory. I'm Silas, Silas Isabwa from Stedma Gardens and uh, we are going to talk about the crested crane or some people refer to it as a Ugandan crane. They are preyed upon by large birds of prey like uh, the eagles or the hawks, especially of the young ones. But uh, for the big crested cranes, uh, we have other large eagles like the martial eagles, that's the largest eagle in the world that will present on the crested cranes. Defensively, they are long toes, they use them to kick their enemy or sometimes they are forced to peck or bite their enemies as well. The Swahili name of the crested crane is the Korongo. They live up to 30 years in captivity. Crested cranes are most of the times or known, known to be standing on one feet. Just like even on the national flag, it is pictured on the flag with one feet up. And uh, so many people always ask why do they stand on one, fe one feet. But basically, for most of the birds, when it's too cold, they stand on one heat just to generate internal heat so that to keep it warm. Because if there is much stress put on one leg that is standing down, he, the muscles generate the internal heat so the, the bird is kept warm, it doesn't feel the cold. And that's why most of the time the crane birds, whenever they are in the wet or swampy places, they are standing on one leg. The crested cranes hatch their eggs in turns with females and males sharing their roles and like in human beings where men leave the responsibility to females. Um. Um. They have a breeding display involving dancing, bowing and jumping. It has a booming call which involves inhalation of the red gula sac. These species of cranes are the only ones that can roast on trees because of their long hind toe that grasp branches. The crested cranes are mostly in savanna in Africa, south of Sahara, although their nests are mostly in wetter habitats. They are resilient birds and can still be found in abundance in some areas. However, its habitat is slowly being depleted. They are omnivorous which means they are like human beings. They eat both meat and plants. The cranes are well adapted to avoid predators and mostly you will find them taking cover amongst herds of grazing animals so as to escape their enemies. They form pairs that bonds at their early ages and once these birds find a partner, they will remain with that breeding partner for life.
waterbuck is a large antelope which is grey in colour with white marks behind them. The Afrikaans refer to it as waterbuck and the Germans as the wasserbuck. Its Swahili name is Kuro and has a lifespan of up to 18 years in captivity. It was first described by Irish naturalist William Ogilby in 1833. The head and body length is typically between 177 to 235 centimeters and the average height of between 120 and 136 centimeters. The coat color varies from brown to gray with males having long spiral horns that curves backwards then forward and 55 to 99 centimeters long. They are mostly found in grassy savanna woodland or scattered bush clump and are always within 1.8 kilometers of the nearest permanent drinking water. Waterbucks by gestation period it lasts for about seven to nine months and they give birth to one young one of which they circle that's how they feed their young ones and they circle for about three months thereafter the young ones continue feeding on grass or leaves because that's what makes their entire food on predation waterbucks initially they used to be predated by, by the lions the leopards and uh, partially on ch by cheetahs but waterbucks are known to have a unique defensive mechanism against their predators whereby they secrete adrenaline that toxifies their meat if they know they are prone to danger therefore if you kill it the meat it doesn't taste nice for you thus it's never eaten up after even being killed thus nowadays lions don't prefer even attacking the water bugs they just leave them at peace they're generally peaceful but become highly aggressive when wounded captured or under social stress especially when they don't hesitate to defend themselves when potential danger is detected they frequently retreat into the water and submerge with only nostrils above the surface. They are good swimmers and are capable of crossing flooded rivers. They are mostly active in daylight during the early morning and late afternoon and move on average of 0.5 to 1 km per day. Waterbugs are ruminants feeding almost exclusively on grass and forbs. They consume both soft and roughage material of medium to tall grasses and are thus classed as semi-bulk feeders. Waterbugs are highly dependent on water and drink two or more times a day amounting to approximately 10 liters. Lama is a domesticated animal which is an interbreed of a camel and a goat. They have elegant wolves with a graceful posture giving them a striking beauty 
as compared to other hooped animals. Their wool ranges from white to black with shades of grey, red, brown and brown in between. Llamas have a lifespan of 15 to 25 years with an average weight of between 280 and 350 pounds but a large male can sometimes weigh up to 500 pounds. Their gestation period is from 8 to 9 months and they give birth to only one offspring. The llamas originated from the central plains of North America 40 million years ago before they moved to South America due to climate change. In highlands of Bolivia and Peru, 400 to 500 years ago, llamas were domesticated animals placing them among the oldest domesticated animals in the world. They are highly social animals and in most of the time you will find them in pairs or with other grazing livestock. When they come in contact with human beings, they like being touched on their necks and backs. As a recreation center, we want to be unique. If you go to other animal parks, you'll be able to see the normal animals that are, are there every day people can see. But for Stedmark we wanted to be unique. So we decided to come up with unique things. And as I've told you before or earlier, that our environment has very unique things. The llama is one of the unique animals in Kenya. The only places that you can see them or can find them is in at Stedmark and at Limoru. So for for Stedmark we with the help of the government we were able to acquire and get the llama from South America and uh, we had three and one goat uh, was not able to survive because of the environment, the weather. Uh, with the help of the doctors from the Kenyan Wildlife Services, we were able to be advised well on how to keep them because in uh, South America they are used to very cold season and when they were brought in it was very hot. So they are, they are used to stay in mountains, but here it was very it was very very hot that time. For the case of the llama, uh, we did the the process. The people came uh, and saw the environment. They give us approvals, 